I want to revisit our conversation last week about Nas and Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. Ever heard the new Nas album? I haven't, but I heard people are saying it is off the charts. Absolutely <laughs> insanity. So I know I said home. Shout out home. I see you. I'm doubling back. Wow. Nas. The album's insane, bro. Yeah, you I have, have to go When you get a it. moment, take it in. Yeah. Take it in for sure. I'm definitely going more Nas. <laughs> nice. More reps. to another episode of More Reps. I'm your host, Chadwick Brown. And I'm Kavana Beckles. Yes, sir. So we're back again. Um, got some new topics for y'all today. I don't think we fully explained in the last episode with the way we do our format. We have them in three different sets and then a super set. So set one today, we'll be talking about struggles of being a personal trainer in the fitness industry. Because a lot of people think it's a really glamorous, yeah, yeah, glamorous thing, but there's a lot of struggles that go on behind the scenes that people don't really know yeah, about. So yeah. you want to touch on certain things that you've encountered so far in your career? Yeah, well, uh, well just before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our international artist. Yes. Uh, world renowned, that. one of the biggest hip hop heads that I know personally, Leon mm -hmm. Robinson, goes yep. by the name, AKA Eclipse. Yep. He graciously um, provided one of his many pieces of artwork here, Usain Bolt, just for us to have on the platform to Crazy. give some uh, visual background for you guys. Crazy, looks, looks super dope, man. Yeah. Shout out to Eclipse for sure, for sure. All right, so yeah, let's talk about a little bit of things that go on in the industry. Um, I think my biggest struggle when I get new clients is basically letting them understand that I'm gonna take them from point A all the way to the end of their journey mm -hmm. and just start building that trust within um, the program that we designed for them. Because I know okay. a lot of times, personal trainers, uh, a little misconception is we're just gonna deal with fitness or we're just gonna deal with um, nutrition or a combination of both, where in actuality, you're going to be a life coach for them. Mm -hmm. You're going to be their food mentor. Yeah. You're going to be a personal mentor. Yeah. You're gonna be a counselor. A therapist and for sure. <laughs> all the things that come with that. So. It's very, it's very important that a client understands that a trainer is going to be giving a lot to them. Yep. So sometimes I know prices can fluctuate here and there, but know that you're getting so much more than the price laid out mm. because it's more than fitness. It's Absolutely. more than nutrition. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. One of the biggest struggles I find is having clients actually listening to what you're telling yes, them. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> whether it be certain cues or just their tempo and stuff, sometimes when I talk to them, okay, listen, this mm -hmm. is what we're doing today. We're gonna focus on slowing down the tempo. Yeah. And once they kind of get to a certain rep range and they're feeling that pain, they want to just gun through it. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, 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 Okay, yeah, listen, yeah. listen, like, yeah. we're, not, we're not doing yeah. that. And a lot of them just want to get the workout done and, mm -hmm. and I, I have the struggle sometimes feeling, am I really getting through this person or we're just being like a rep counter for them? Mm -hmm. and, which I don't want to be, I want to yeah. actually mold their life and mold their structure and exactly. stuff you know what i mean yeah so and then it gets a struggle sometimes some people are really receptive and they catch on to it right away some people yeah. are just like and then my struggle is that like i don't get too detached from them yes where, where i'm just kind of just taking their money and just counting count the rest i really actually want to make an impact on them yes. and have them learn and whatnot mm -hmm. um another struggle that i really have is um to find that balance that sweet spot between my work and my personal life Mm. So a lot of times the stuff that I'm doing here will carry over at home. Yes. And before I know the day's done and I gotta be back the next day doing the exact same thing again. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's not as glamorous as people think. It's it's oh. it's, a, it's a passionate job. I for got sure. the passion for it, I'm sure you do too. For sure. But um, yeah, there's that balance, find that sweet spot for sure. And, the, and a lot of stuff in the industry too is just a lot of, um, a lot of fakers too, man. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people pose and, and they might have good genetics and they look good and they're like, oh, I got mm -hmm. this, this by doing five reps of this and six reps of this and that doesn't work for everybody. No. You no. know what I mean? So it's all about finding what right, works for every single person because each person is different. There's no mm -hmm. like cookie cutter way to like change every single person. Exactly. You know? Yeah. One of my struggles too is I think a lot of personal trainers question if the program that they designed for their client is actually working. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly always questioning yourself to see is this actually working and yeah. do i know what i'm doing do i have enough yeah, yeah. research behind it okay. because oftentimes to touch on what you said you have clients that aren't going to listen sometimes mm -hmm. so they might tell you that yes i'm at home i'm following the structure that you laid out mm -hmm. 
And then you're going home questioning yourself because you know that that exact plan that you laid out has worked time and time again. Yeah, why is so, it not working now? Exactly. So yeah. why is it not working? So yeah. that's something that I've dealt with from the time I became a trainer to even now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because we're only with them for an hour, two hours, three hours of the whole week. Exactly. We have exactly. no idea what they're doing. Exactly. We don't know if they're if they're being active outside mm -hmm. of their training, mm -hmm. if their their nutrition's on point, if their sleep's on point. We don't know. We're just trusting mm -hmm. that they are. So it could easily not be doing that and coming back and saying, yeah, we are. Yep. And we're like, what the hell's going on? Exactly. This program should be doing exactly. something and you're you got a plateau right through the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. So definitely not struggles with that for sure. Because I, I speak for myself, I'm pretty sure the same way. I'm really invested in my clients. Yes. Like, yeah, like same I way. I care about these people. Same you way. You know what I mean? So it's not even mm. about the money. The money's just like a, a side effect that comes from doing mm. my passion. You know what I yeah. mean? So when but someone starts hitting hitting um, a wall and, the, and nothing's happening, you're right. I start question myself. Like, yeah. what am I doing? Is it me? But yeah. Really, it's not. It's, it's not that. It could be them. You know. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Most trainers are going to give you a glimpse of the research and education that they had throughout their whole training experience and life. Because also with being a personal trainer, you're a life coach yep. to your client. Absolutely. So you're going to tell them all the things that you've encountered, obstacles that you've been able to overcome in your life. So. Um, having a receptive client will make the trainers programming a lot better and it'll function a lot more smoothly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more for sure. For sure. No doubt. So hopefully we're going to get to our next set right here. All right. Now we get into set two and we're going to discuss how we, uh, use our fitness in our daily -day life, like our functional lives day to day. Um, for myself, I know. Since I've gotten into fitness, I've been really more cognizant of like how I'm just actually moving. Yes. Even if I drop something on the floor, I don't just bend over and arch my back. I usually kind of go into like a squat form for myself. I have to have a wider stance on my toes out because I got tight ankles mm -hmm. and, and hips. And I squat down just to pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, even lifting something, brace my core, squat down, lift with my knees, I'm sort of with my legs, not my back, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so every day, it definitely translates over into the real world um, if you're really thinking about it. A lot of people, it's so easy to come here, have perfect form, and then you go mm, outside yeah, and you're exactly. just, like, just drag yourself around yeah, and for not, sure. not having good posture and whatnot. Yep. So, um, yeah, a lot of things that I teach my clients, I try to practice myself mm. on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? Nice, nice. Uh, the function in my life, I've always find, found that if I can go hard and make my workouts very difficult that everything in my life runs smoothly huh. just because I know if I have the struggle there and I'm able to get through that workout, yeah. there's nothing that life is actually going to throw at me that I can't get through. Very true. Okay. So I use it for, um, a little bit of mental clarity, mm -hmm. uh, anger release, frustration mm -hmm. release. Big but time. again, I take all that out in the gym so that I'm a better person outside the gym so that I know I can accomplish whatever's thrown at me throughout Absolutely. that day. I can definitely relate to that one for yeah. sure because I've had some really shitty days where I'm just like, my nine to five job is killing me or I'm having mm -hmm. some kind of turmoil at my household and I come here, I lock in, yes. release, and yeah. I just I legit feel better walking exactly. out. I'm, like, I'm yeah. so glad I did that. Yeah. Now I'm not going to have that, that pent it up um, anger and frustration that yeah. might come to a head God knows where in exactly. throughout my life. You know? exactly. so that, that's definitely a really good way to do it for sure too. And, and a lot of my clients, same thing. Um, I had a client last week who said that they were having a really, really shitty day and they almost didn't even come in. They almost no-showed. Mm -hmm. They showed up. Halfway through the workout, they're like, yo, I'm so grateful that I came here yeah. and, and did this right now. And, and I talked to them the session after that and they said that the day turned out perfect. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, fitness it definitely is a good way to, to, to release that, that anger and balance your life for sure too. Yeah. yeah, often with my clients, I find that they'll come in and say a similar thing. I'm having a really bad day. I almost didn't come. I didn't want to come. And in my mind, going through those exact same experiences, I know that will be one of the best workouts that they've had mm -hmm. leading up to that point. Because yep. sometimes you just feel so drained or mentally or physically drained that you might hit that wall and that's the wall that you don't want to get through, mm -hmm. that you're actually kind of hesitant to get through. And then that workout is going to push you to another level yes. to break down that barrier or that wall, or maybe yeah. even a plateau. Yeah. So exact same thing as your client. As soon as we're done that session, they're like, I'm so grateful that I came today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, the, and the, in turns can also boost our confidence. Kind of yeah. It's like there's nothing that can hold me back now. Exactly. I, I exactly. had the hurdles. I came here. I pushed myself through it. Wow. I did that. Exactly. They're exceeding their limitations. You yeah. know what I mean? That's the part of our job too. We're pushing them to their limits and have them do things they could feel like they could never do on yeah. their own, you yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So now, set three, we're about to get into right now. All right. So now set three, we're going to be talking about a typical day in the life of a trainer and what it kind of looks like. 
Um, so for myself, I have a nine to five job, like I've specified before. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I'll get up in the morning, make all my meals for the day, make my wife's meals, make my son's meals, um, get on the road, do that job. And then on my lunch break, I'll come here, train a couple clients and whatnot, um, go back on the road, so later on through the day, come back, get my session in. I usually mm. have clients that are during the day and also in the evening. So I'll do mm. my evening clients then. Um, it's different day to day, but usually I'm here seven days a week. Always got some kind of clients going on. Nice. You know? And then um, in terms of my extra training styles, now so I'm doing like a four day split, which I've talked about in the last episode. But now we've really been focusing on more so tempo and not really counting reps. Yep. So kind of just going more for feeling. Once I feel like I'm getting to failure, that's when I cut the set, as opposed to I'm doing 16 reps or 15 reps, and then once I hit that, I'm done. When mm -hmm. I know I got some more reps in reserve. So kind of break out of the plateau that I've kind of been in more recently. Um, so yeah, more training for feeling and reaching true failure, because I've never really, throughout my whole lifting career, really hit failure consecutive, yeah. consecutive times. Yeah. A lot of times I'll go home, it's like I could have got another five more reps out yeah, of that bench exactly. or whatever yeah. have you. So kind of just playing with more different styles, see how my body reacts and adapts to that, you know? Mm -hmm. What's your day? Uh, like? My day typically is I do build custom gyms on the side. So mm -hmm. usually I'll try to set up my consults for the morning because you're usually out of town. And then I'll come back, train a few clients, and then try to get my lift in usually sometime after lunch, either uh, in a commercial space or at home. I have a garage gym. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the day, I'll have a couple more evening clients and then just make sure everyone's good with all their meals. Again, like you, uh, separate and make everything in the morning. Make, yep. So it's just cookie cutter, get home, everything's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then uh, either I'll work out again with my wife in the evening or um, I'll just do a light stretching routine just to make sure that I'm, I'm ready and prepped for the next day. Nice, sweet, sweet. Speaking of home gyms. Yeah. Them jammer arms that you got. So your home gym look crazy, bro. You been yeah. using them a lot yeah, recently? Yeah. I've yeah. been using them because <laughs> they kind of act like uh, a monolift as well. So they're jammer arms that will basically fall away and back from your uh, squat rack. So it allows you to get into a lot of Olympic lifts, a lot of more explosive dynamic stuff. So yeah. it's just another toy, I guess, <laughs> for yeah, the yeah. gym to play it's around a with. Fun, fun yeah. toy to use, you know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely holler at the man if you need something for your gym customized made, you know? Um, another thing, actually, I want to touch on what my wife does in terms of our uh, our training business. Uh, she actually handles our clients' check-ins. Nice. So that's something I don't really have interest in. I have more interest in training people. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of does something like, that's your baby. You take care of that. Yeah. So and that's really, she's really thorough with it. So she uh, emails all of the clients, has them sending in their photos, sending in their macro counts that they've got nice. over, over the nice. week. Yeah. Um, telling them to adjust macros if they're having trouble hitting their mm -hmm. protein and whatnot. Um, we actually sit down and look at the pictures and see if there's actually making progress from week to week mm. to week and know what we got to tweak within their program. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another facet that, that she handles and, and I'm really grateful that she does that, you know, but it's, it's work, man. Yeah, it's it work. Is, this whole is. thing is work, man, is. you know, absolutely. Anything else you got to touch on that? Uh, typically I train more younger athletes, so mm. I'm not really concerned about their macros. My biggest concern is just getting them to eat something. So okay. usually anywhere between eight years old and uh, some of my clients, or let's say early 20s, yeah. just to have them eating consistently to have enough energy in their, um, in their reserves to get through the workout from food yeah. is a struggle with me. So I'm not really into the counting macros for those athletes, but Fair. some of my older clients, yeah, we do look at what your intake is for the day, breaking down the protein, the fats and the carbs, just to make sure that they're not overeating and then they're they're intaking the correct portions to yep. sustain their lifestyle that they're living. For sure, for yeah. sure. Now for our client base, it's kind of side tangent. Um, the majority of our clients are just looking to lose weight. Yeah, a couple exactly. Of them, yeah. A couple of them want, yeah. to, want, to, want to put on muscle in some size and whatnot. Yeah. So now, what do you think is the main difference between training as a regular general population person and an athlete? Is it, is it more so the, the more dynamic, more like um, lateral movements? Is it the rep range, is it the weights? Well, I, honestly, going back to a lot of my research that I've done in the past, I think a lot of people are just, we're, I think we're all athletes. Okay. I think fair. we're just at different stages in our race that we're, that we're competing in. Got it. So I, I believe that the only main difference between training someone who's 30, 40, who's a regular everyday guy or female, the difference is I'm focusing on the sport itself so i'm taking them through explosive movements that will translate directly to their, to sport. their sport more sports so, yeah exactly yeah. so i train a lot of volleyball players basketball players um in the off season dry land hockey so 
with hockey, yeah, we're working on lateral, we're working on legs, we're working on explosive power like that. Mm -hmm. Basketball and volleyball, overhead sports, so we're doing a lot of explosive movements overhead. Because we'd be just, jumping. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that they're prepped and ready for their seasons. Sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, we have yet to... I think I'm, I went with you one time to train the yeah. lacrosse team. Yeah. That was, it was a totally different style of training that I wasn't yeah. used to, but I definitely want to get more in that bag. But yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right. You know what time it is? Superset time. Here we go. All right. Now it's time for the supersets. This is where we bring up two different topics. We do a rapid fire back and forth. We kind of pick one or the other and give a brief description as to why we chose that one. All right, so the first one I got for you, lap pull downs or bend over rows for back. For me personally, I feel a better engagement with uh, bent over rows. Okay. So I like switching it up, switching it up with the T-bar row. So I'll like nice and wide or uh, nice and close with the neutral grip. I just feel my engagement when I'm into that row, I can uh, get into the weight a lot better than a lap pull down myself. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Right, interesting. So, okay, I know you're supposed to be asking me now, but mine is lap pull down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why I find lap pull down is better than bent over row. Because bent over row, you need to have, I'm not saying that I don't have this, but if I'm focused on just getting lats, mm -hmm. when you're in the seated position and you're able to have different elbow positions mm -hmm. whether it be you're doing a neutral grip or you're going wide you're able to focus more on this where with the bent over row you have to have more of core engagement to keep mm -hmm. yourself lined up you have your hams in, in, engaged when you're bent over so i feel like this is working more things than just the lats so if i'm talking just straight lat focus movements i definitely prefer to do a lat pull down and it's more even more specifically a single arm lat okay. pull down so because i like going more neutral grips so i can keep my arms closer to my lat nice. to get okay. more of a squeeze at the bottom but that's just that's just me Okay. Uh, let's touch on something we haven't touched on yet. Cardio. Do you uh, prefer high <laughs> intensity, short with battle ropes, or would you do a long drawn out session on the treadmill? Well, I'll preface this by saying I hate cardio, <laughs> first and foremost, <laughs> but I know it's important, but I'd probably rather do a longer, slower steady state on the elliptical or on the treadmill. Okay. Um, again, it also depends on what my goals are at the moment. Um, if I'm looking to really cut, cut, I want to get the heart rate right up, then I'll definitely do more bow ropes, mm -hmm. slam balls, kind of things like that, jumping jacks and whatnot. But um, in terms of preference, I'd rather go slower and steady. It's kind of more sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, and I can probably go longer distance, less impact on the joints too. Yep. You know, getting yep. older and whatnot, I got to be more cognizant of like how my knees and my elbows and everything yep. are feeling. Yep. So it's probably just, and walking is the best form of cardio ever. We all do it. Yep. So I'd rather be on the treadmill, put on a podcast or whatever have you, have a book there, lock in for an hour, hour and a half and just walk it out. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'll touch on that one as well. Just always being in athletics and training for athletics, I would prefer very fast and oh. easy cardio. I don't, I hate cardio yeah. myself. <laughs> so if I go on the battle ropes and just get my heart rate up as fast as possible, yeah. let it drop back down, I think that's the best for myself. That's what works best yeah. for you. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. All right, got a good one here for you. We're taking it back a bit. Mm -hmm. In Living Color or Chappelle Show? <laughs> Tough. And I was a big In Living Color guy. Yeah. Uh, watched probably like every episode. Every. <laughs> Actually, I was just touching uh, on it the other day with my wife saying what happened then versus if we were able to watch those things now in our society oh and what's happening. Wouldn't and fly. <laughs> Half the shit there would not fly. Yeah, and we have, we're recently uh, new dog owners and there's a very funny skit. Back then it was funny. I don't know about now. I haven't really <laughs> watched it too much. <laughs> But one of the Living Colors guys, he was blind and his dog was dead. Duke, and he used Duke. to drag the dog around. Yeah, his carcass <laughs> dragging around. He had no idea. Now in today's society, absolutely not. It You're not getting away with that. You're mm -hmm. going to be canceled immediately. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate what Dave Chappelle has done with his show. Okay. I think if he had the ability to do another season, I would save Dave Chappelle, but I'm going to okay. lean on In Living Color. In Living Color. Yeah. That was it. When I thought of that one, I was like, that's, a, I can't, I don't, yeah. well, I didn't even answer for myself because yeah. I love both of them thoroughly. And, yeah. just, and there were two different time frames too because Living Color is more 90s. Yes. Right? Where yes. Dave Chappelle is more early 2000s. Yep. And so it's like, and even half the things that Chappelle did, yep. they probably would have flying nowadays too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Very like the, the blind, um, Ku Klux Klan member one. <laughs> yeah. That was insanity. Yeah. That's, it was, I think that was probably for episode one. one, one yeah, 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 it was, was early. set up the whole show. Was, I'm like, what's happening? Yeah. But Living Color, too much classic stuff. Um, I, I, like how, I like how they both had like a hip-hop performance at the end of it by like mm -hmm. one of the, the current groups at the time. 
and I, even the Living Color, there's a lot of music I actually discovered. Yes, through Living yes, Color. yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's like like there's like a I can't remember what song was, but something by Big Daddy Kane when he was on there yes. at the time, the first time ever mm-hmm. hearing it, it premiered mm-hmm. on there. So it was like, and this was before there was internet, you couldn't go and Google mm-hmm. it or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'd probably say Living Color for myself too. That was that was definitely pinnacle in my life for sure. For nice, sure. nice, nice. What you got? Uh, let's throw one back at you. Got one. Uh, yeah, well, let's we'll move from the genre of uh, sitcoms and TV back to music. Okay. And one ha- or one has to go out of the three. Oh. <laughs> East Coast, West Coast, Dirty South. Okay. To me, this is a no-brainer. Dirty South and West Coast. No disrespect. <laughs> East Coast all day. All right. I grew up on, on all East Coast stuff. And I had love for West Coast and mm-hmm. South. And mm-hmm. South was it's probably still running it to this day. Mm-hmm. For sure. I got I, I love the, the Snoops and the NWAs yeah. Yeah. and and um, TI for down south and Jeezy yeah. and all that. But East Coast was my heart. Wu Tang. Um, Mob Deep, Big Daddy Kane, Karis One, mm-hmm. like everything New York based was like my life was molded around that growing nice. up. Like, if you mm-hmm. try to, like, talk like them and dress yeah. like them, you know what I, mean? I didn't really do the khakis and the bandanas, like, West Coast, that wasn't my thing. Yeah. So definitely East Coast. That, like, founded me for who I am as a hip-hop head, for sure, for sure. Nice, that was, that nice. was a good one, though. Yourself? Nice, nice. What was your choice? Uh, I think my life went in different phases. So, growing okay. up in Hamilton, it was all East Coast for me. Yeah. I didn't really touch too much West Coast yeah. until I went to university, and my roommates, surprisingly, were from, all three of them were from... Uh, Africa, they were all from okay. Zimbabwe, okay. all three of my roommates, yeah. and they were the biggest Tupac heads ever. <laughs> so really? all day long, no matter what was going on, Tupac uh-huh. was blurring, and then yeah. Snoop, and then yeah. Dre, yeah. so... So you're, during, you're exposed to so much, yeah. so you know what? So during college, it was a lot of uh, West Coast, okay. not so much East Coast, and then probably t- towards the end of my college career, it was just dirty south. They took over, man. Yeah, like, just, T. I, like everyone, little John, yeah, little John, East Side Boys. Run. Like everyone was just yeah, just, for yeah. sure. So this, yeah. different phases. Yeah, maybe. different phases. So what? What when, when has to stay? Two got to go. What's, <sighs> what would it be? What's the final answer? I want to say West Coast and uh, West Coast and East Coast can go right now because I'm in t- back to my dirty back self. Back right in the now. south, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, with, with no, a little no, bit of Ti. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. yeah. Ti, the king for real, for real. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right, got one for you. Um, the great outdoors or beaches? Uh, that's a quick one for me. I'd rather be in the outdoors. Okay, so, I could have figured that. Yeah, out. yeah. yeah. Okay. So my, my family likes to hike, and yeah. I'm in the trails all the time with my dog, and mm-hmm. just just experiencing like what we have around us, just trying to like kind of disappear into the the great outdoors. I prefer mm-hmm. that. Wow. How about yourself? Super, super tough, bro. Because. I'm, I feel like I'm equal in both. And I'm trying to think right now which one, if I had a preference, if one had to go, which one could I do the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. The same thing. I love hiking. We're hiking all the time mm-hmm. with our kids, with the dog and everything. Um, but summertime, the beaches and just being close to the water, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Have music going, have a couple of bevies. And it's like, ooh, I'm going to have to lean towards the great outdoors because I feel mm-hmm. like you can enjoy that more throughout the, the, the calendar year. Than beaches. Beaches literally summertime. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit in the fall, a little bit in the in the spring. But I mm-hmm. we can we hike. Last year Christmas we went for a big hike on Christmas Day. Yeah, you can hike all year round. So yeah, great outdoors. Great nice. Outdoors, I'm pick. Yeah. All right. Here's one for you. Um, we'll think about a little bit of vacation mode. Would you prefer hitting the beach and relaxing, or exploring and taking in the full culture of the place that you're going to visit? Mm, I like both. I like both. <laughs> but. I think it all depends on where I'm at, um, but I'm probably going to have to say exploring out from the resort and checking yeah. out the local culture and see how mm-hmm. they live, see what their traditions are, eat their food, because on the resort, you get the same stuff there. They exactly. Home, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, it's more, I don't want to say I feel fake, just kind of being like a tourist and like mm-hmm. staying on the beach and stuff, but yeah, I want to experience how the people that live wherever I'm, yeah. wherever I'm at, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. Last time I went to Jamaica, you know, I am Jamaican. And, um, but I could never get enough actually leaving the resort and going yeah. amongst the people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And then just mm-hmm. like experience it, like how my mom had it when she was living back there and whatnot. So yeah, I would definitely li- would leave the resort for sure. Nice. Nice. You? Uh, I prefer, I, I've, I've had the ability to go a lot of different places in the world. Always. I would like to immerse myself in the culture Dope. because oftentimes I think, uh, like in media, they kind of skew what the real perception of a place is. Yep, so I would like my own 
uh, perception to be valid and I want to go see exactly what I'm going to see. Yeah, exactly. So I like to g get around, yeah. try the foods, um, talk to people, mingle. Yeah, yeah, yeah just to see yeah. The, the sites and not always the famous sites. Um, I like to go around and see the not so famous sites just to get a yeah. better understanding of the, the country feeling. and the culture. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I like that, I like that. Um, all right, got a food one. All right. Pizza or Chinese? <laughs> Hmm. Uh, I would say for me, pizza. pizza. Okay. Yeah, I, I prefer a really deep dish meat lovers pizza over deep any, dish too. Yeah, right? yeah, over any Chinese food any day. Really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm kind of on the fence with deep dish because it's like mm. it's almost like an open face Panzerati. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you got even like a fork and knife sometimes because it's so damn thick. But for me, I'm gonna have to say Chinese mm -hmm. just because there's so much more variety. Mm. Pizza, I know you can have different varieties, put yeah, different things yeah, on it and whatnot, yeah. but I mean, between the egg rolls and the lo mein and the, 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 the shrimp and there's just so much different things in it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So mm -hmm. I definitely have to lean more towards, more towards Chinese, for nice, sure, for nice. sure. All right, here's one back at you. Right. Regular yogurt or Greek yogurt? Right now, I'm going to say Greek, mm -hmm. because just in terms of nutrition and what I'm chasing with my goals, I have to incorporate a lot more Greek. Mm -hmm. And at first, I wasn't a big fan of it at all, but I've definitely found ways to kind of like jazz it up and make it yep. more more palatable for myself. And mm -hmm. so I love it. But growing up, I love me some stirred yogurt, mm. a, little bit, a, little, a, little bit, a little bit of fruit bottom, you know yeah. what I mean? A little crumbs and mix it up, you know what I'm saying? Like that was, yeah. that was my shit back then, you know? You know? Yeah. But right now, I have to say Greek, Greek yogurt, because like you said, you, you can get a good... 17 to 20 grams of protein in a serving yeah no fat you know what i mean and so it's just a good clean um protein source so i'd have to say i'd have to say greek yogurt yeah sure. yeah i would agree greek yogurt yogurt as well i grew up on the stir bottom one too yeah <laughs> and then yeah yeah greek yogurt just it's better for you all around no doubt yeah, no yeah. Doubt. but again like you said you have to find ways to mix it up so myself i'll put a little bit of honey in there to sweeten it up a little Same. bit and I'll put a little bit of granola and maybe some frozen fruit. Yeah, and it's yeah. almost like a little treat at that point. Exactly. And, and you exactly. Have to feel a little bit better about yourself eating and not feeling guilty that I mm -hmm. ate some some crappy food for sure. Yeah, exactly. No, no doubt, no doubt. Um, movies. In terms of directors, Spielberg or Scorsese? Mm, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I'll go Spielberg. Okay. Yeah, I, I like his like uh, his. Uh, Film directing and the way he spins the story is a little bit better than uh, Scorsese. Got it, got it. Yeah. I'd have to agree with that to see Spielberg because I feel like he's got better range. Yes. Where Scorsese kind of has one pocket and he kind of stays in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, all the, like, the, the more gangster type movies where Spielberg, like I've seen him do some movies, I'm just like, I, I didn't believe that was a Spielberg movie. Mm -hmm. Whether it be sci-fi, it be drama, it be action, like he's got more, more lanes. Mm -hmm. So I definitely enjoy more Spielberg than, than Scorsese myself. Nice. For sure, for nice. sure. What else you got? Got anything else? No, I think that's, I think that's it. Perfect. That's super good. sets. Super sets. Hope you all enjoyed that. And that's it. I believe we're at the end of another episode. More reps. Hope you all stay tuned in. You know, um, again, let's give a shout out to the homie Eclipse for the amazing Usain Bolt artwork right here. Um, big things to come. We have some interviews lining up soon. You can follow us very soon on TikTok and also on IG. So stay tuned for that. We'll let you know. Anything else you'd like to add, my friend? Not much. Stay true. Keep rocking with us. That's it.